Microsoft Windows. It's basically the digital version of a carton of milk that's been left out in the summer sun. Both of these things seem to get worse with age, but unlike Microsoft Windows, that chunky sour milk carton and the insects that the rotten fragrance would attract are not going to force advertisements upon you for more proprietary bloatware that you do not need. Yes, advertisements have been a core part of the Windows operating system for some time now. Windows 10 has been around for almost eight years at this point, which is when Microsoft's ads really started to become a lot more noticeable. Ads for games like Words with Friends or Candy Crush were in the start menu on Windows 10, and they were almost as iconic as the redesigned start menu itself. And of course, in addition to these ads that are shown throughout Windows 10, the operating system also came with a vastly increased amount of telemetry, a computer that's running Windows 10 or later that is connected to the internet is constantly sending information about your computer usage habits to Microsoft so that they can quote, solve problems and keep Windows up to date, secure and operating properly. And the data also helps them improve Windows and related Microsoft products. Now, this second sentence is what really stands out to me. It also helps us improve Windows and related Microsoft products and services. How exactly is passively collecting usage data of an operating system from people going to improve Windows for its end users? Wouldn't it make more sense for Microsoft to just ask the users of their operating system how they wanted it to be improved? Wouldn't it make more sense to let these users submit voluntary detailed bug reports or requests for new features in the operating system instead of just treating them like lab rats that you just passively collect data from after conducting some kind of experiment on them? The truth is, We've always been Microsoft's lab rats, at least whenever we're using their products. And I think the only reason that builds of Windows from the late 90s and the early 2000s, you know, those builds of Windows like XP and uh, Windows Millennium Edition that we all used, I think the reason that they didn't have this much telemetry is because the computers and the networks of those days were just too slow. They were just getting to the point where PCs with fast, intuitive GUIs could surf the web at decent speeds. But now that CPU cores are abundant and most people, at least in the cities, uh, have access to high-speed internet, computers that are running Windows can just double as data collection devices and, more importantly, advertising machines to make more money. Yes, that is the real improvement that Microsoft is making and has been making to Windows. Not making it faster, not making it easier to use, or making it so that it's going to extend the battery life of your devices. No, it's increasing the number of ads that you will see when you are using the OS. And of course, that is improving the amount of money that Microsoft can make from a person using the OS. Microsoft figured out that it's much more profitable to just give away the Windows operating system for free or to at least just give away a gimped version of the OS that's riddled with watermarks and you can't put the start menu into a logical place if you want to use Windows 11 for free. And I guess this approach of giving at least something away for free was to try and get more people using the OS so that they can then sell ad space within it for targeted ads in places like the start menu, the file manager, and now there's even ads in the settings menu. This is the latest ad update that Microsoft has introduced to Windows 11. Uh, when you go into this settings menu, or as I like to call it, the crappier version of the control panel. Because back in my day, that's all we had and that's all we needed. And on the rare occasion that I still have to work with 
some kind of Windows machine, I can't even find half of the things that I need in this new fangled settings menu. I find it in the control panel or I do it in PowerShell. But anyway, enough of me ranting about the control panel. This is a screenshot of a preview build for Windows 11, which is basically just an early beta update that only a few people get to see and try out for Microsoft before they release it to the rest of the lab rats. This is only for the special lab rats. Uh, and this particular screenshot was posted by Albacore on Twitter. And this shows us an ad for Microsoft 365, their subscription-based office suite. Another thing that Microsoft has changed to make more money, instead of just letting you buy Word, Excel, or whatever individual software that you need, and you buy it once and you own it for life, or at least until they deprecate it. So I guess, no, you never really did have Office for Life. But the way that it was back in the day, I think was better, instead of this yearly subscription that they want you to pay, like it's some kind of RuneScape membership or something. And all of these massive profits that are coming out of Microsoft's ad network are being concentrated at the top of Microsoft's corporate structure more and more. Microsoft has already laid off a bunch of employees with the rest of big tech, and it's recently come out that Microsoft is going to skip the salary increases this year for their full-time employees because they've put so much effort and money into developing their AI because it's the most profitable thing, it's the hot new thing right now. And if this is going to continue to be successful, if AI is gonna to continue to be successful with Microsoft, then it's probably going to snowball into more layoffs and more bonus cuts at the company. Now, Microsoft is not the only big tech company that is investing in AI and ad networks. Google has started ramping up the number of ads that they show in Gmail. They've even started putting ads right in the middle of people's inboxes so that you think it's important mail. There's plenty of screenshots that people have been posting on Twitter of their inboxes with all of these ads. And if you look closely, you can tell what's mail and what's an ad, but how many bleary-eyed people are looking at their inboxes tired early in the morning, clicking on the wrong things? Google knows exactly what they're doing here, just like when they put ads at the top of your search results. And I wouldn't be surprised if hackers end up taking advantage of this ad network in Google as well. How long is it gonna be until we hear about somebody's computer or even an entire company's network system being taken over because one employee clicked on an ad inside of Gmail that led them to a malicious website where they downloaded some Trojan horse software, it took over their computer, it took over the whole network, and then you've got ransomware encrypting all of the devices, and you've got data being exfiltrated and sold on the dark web. And if these kinds of malware campaigns start taking place, we're probably going to see Google take the same kind of half measures to stop it, just like they did with the search ads. Because why? Why would you make things safe for people when you can make money? But there is a way for you to be safer online, and that is to take it upon yourself to improve your own digital literacy. I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but these corporations are not here to give you free email or a free operating system for your own benefit. It's free because you are the product. Free as in freedom, not as in beer self-hosted and federated technology without corporate telemetry is the only way forward. So look into using it yourself for your day-to-day -day lives so that you can free yourself from Google and Microsoft shackles. Like and comment to hack the algorithm, follow me on Odyssey, and have a great day.